G'day lads and gentlemen, welcome to Draw with Jazza, I'm Jazza and today I'm doing a video tutorial on setting up a face for animation and then after this I'm going to be doing a video tutorial on animating and lip syncing itself so this is the face I'm going to be setting up for animation and it's a flat image, I can't really do anything with this now when I say set up for animation I say that meaning that I'm going to be setting up different structures and layers so that the animating of the face is much smoother and simpler then redrawing it every time I want him to move, uh, which can be a very time consuming process. So this is my flat image. I'm going to zoom in here. This program is Adobe Flash, by the way, for those of you who uh, don't have it or don't know what I'm using to animate. So I'm just going to select this. I'm going to hit F8 to convert it to a symbol so I can use it uh, in various scenarios. And I'm going to turn this into a graphic and I'm going to call this douche head. There you go, so I've got a graphic symbol here. Now that may not change anything apparently straight away but you'll see over time what we're doing this for. So I'm going to double click this and I can enter inside it. All right. So if I hit back, we go back to the main timeline and I can double click again. That goes inside the graphic and that has its own set of layers. Right. So if I go back to the main timeline, we only have one layer. If I double click, it's like going inside this symbol that I've created with its own set of layers. And I'm going to lock the bottom layer, which I've got this head reference on. And I'm going to select a white square and I'm just going to click and drag over this character and I'm going to select the square and make the transparency low. Okay, so I'll draw the square, select it and bring it down to 70%. That way when I click off, I've got that image still there, but it's quite light, right? So that means if I lock both of those layers and then on a layer above that, I draw it's just easier to see what I'm drawing separate to this image. So I've set up my reference I'm now ready to create the layers that I'm going to use to, to make animation with. So I'm just going to make sure I have an abundance of layers. And the first thing I do is on a lower layer, I'm going to create the base structure of the head, the bits that I won't be really moving. Okay. So to do this, I want to select the pen thickness I want. I think that thickness is quite good. And I know the ears aren't going to move. So I'm going to draw the ear with a black. I'm going to do the same with the sideburns. They're not going to really move. The back of the hair, that's not going to move. Um, but I actually want to allow for some motion in the front part of the hair. Okay. Um, that being said, there's really not much in this head that won't be moving because he's got a really narrow brow and his cheekbones are so close to his large mouth and jaw there's really going to be quite a bit of of motion to be honest um, I will draw in the cheekbone and I'll go up here to that brow so this basically is what will not be moving okay what I'm going to do now is I'm going to hide these two top layers, unlock my bottom layer, and I'm going to use the eyedropper, shortcut is I, and I'm going to select some of these colors. First of all, I'll select that neutral skin tone, and it will paste here into my swatches. I'm going to do the same for this darker shade of skin tone. And I'm going to select the hair, and uh, what else do we need? The gums. Notice so I've got this palette building here on the right now, and I can start to uh, use them to add the layers of color in my other image. And I'm going to select the two colors within the glasses here too. Now I'm going to go back and make the others visible and using these colors I'm going to create the base of the face. The base of the face. Base of the face. Okay, so I'm going to select this hair color and draw a line and fill that in. Now what I've done is when I hit B to select my brush, this little button here is set to paint behind. By default, it's set to paint normal, which means if I squiggle lines over there, it'll appear on top. But what I do in particular when coloring is I select paint behind. And it means every time I paint, it appears behind things I've already painted. And that's quite useful because I can draw this line here and it won't go over the lines I've already drawn. Okay, so I'm going to select the same thing, the two colors of the skin, fill that in, and I've got the base of that back hair bit. And then I'm going to select that same flat, darker color, fill in the side of the head, then the lighter color, and just go straight across like that. 
Now it might look a bit strange as it is right now. I'm gonna make a bit of room for where the mouth will go. So you kind of get a feel as to how the setup needs to happen. And I've been doing this long enough to know that this is an adequate head base. And it's quite a weird sort of thing. Uh, normally they wouldn't be this complicated, but it's good to kind of show how I'd piece this together. So I'm gonna select this, hit F8, and I'm gonna call this douche head base. And then that is a symbol and I'm gonna leave that there, lock it and not touch it anymore. Now this will make more sense as we go along and you'll see how it develops. But for now, I'm just gonna leave this. I've got the layer locked and I'm gonna hit this little box here, which makes it a wireframe, right? So that means that I can see through it, but I can see the outlines of the areas I've drawn. And that is gonna be very useful as we add these parts to the picture so we can see everything on its own layer and how they're gonna move. So next, I'm going on the layer above it and I'm selecting a black and I'm going to draw the eyes. Now when I say the eyes, I mean no more than this, than the actual circles and then whites of the eyes. I don't want the pupils or anything. I'm gonna select all of that, hit F8, and I'm gonna call this douche eye base. If you can't tell, this character is meant to be a bit of a douchey character. Anyways, so now that I've got the eye base in there, I'm gonna lock that and wireframe that, right? So you can see that we're adding these parts to the image. Next layer above it, I'm going to draw some pupils. Paint in the whites of the pupils, select that, hit F8 to convert it to a graphic symbol. I'll call this douche pupils. Then on the layer above that, after I wireframe and lock the pupils, I'm gonna get my black and I'm going to draw the nose. You can see how I'm building up these layers and with each layer on top where in front of the layer behind. So the, the nose now appears in front of these two eye layers that I've drawn and it adds this uh, sense of depth. And it also means that I can move the pupils around and they will appear behind the nose. So now I'm gonna select this nose, hit F8, uh, and I'm gonna call this douche <laughs> nose, hit enter. Now, one thing I like to do personally with animating a face is to have the brows, the eyebrows and the nose part of the same symbol. So I could have drawn them together and converted them to symbol, but I'm, instead I'm just gonna edit them by double clicking on the nose, which means I go inside the nose graphic and you know it's, you notice it's got its own timeline here now. And I can draw the neutral eyebrow position. Okay, so it's gonna be slightly different to the position these reference eyebrows are in because that's got a bit of an expression. I just want a very neutral eyebrow expression. Okay, and there we go. That's quite simply done. <clears throat> I'll go outside of that and you'll notice if I unwireframe it, we've already got this face being built. Now I'm gonna go back inside this clip with the nose and the eyebrows and I'm gonna draw the top of the forehead. And the reason I'm doing this is because as the eyebrows move up, Let's say if I redrew these eyebrows and push them up, the forehead should move with them because it's so narrow and it's such a small area and everything would be quite affected by his eyebrow movements. And if I wanted some extreme movement, the brow's got to go with it. So I've got to have that as part of it. Now, I'm not going to be afraid to just push it past this hair area because in the end, the hair's going to be on top of this layer anyway. So what I can actually do is this. Draw and fill in this whole area with that skin color. Then when I go out of it, you'll notice that that is all flush and it all meets up quite well, even though it in reality doesn't, it looks like it's all the one thing. So it's almost like I'm creating these jigsaw puzzle pieces that on separate layers look like they come together, but they all have their own little purpose, okay? So next layer above, I'm gonna just wireframe and lock all those layers. I'm gonna select my brush Shortcut B, and I'm gonna draw his hair. So I've got the outline of his hair here. I'm gonna select my hair color, draw a line, and I want it to overlap that uh, pink line there because I want it to be above the, the hair in the back. I'm gonna select this, convert it to a symbol by hitting F8, douche hair. Hit enter, and there we go. We've got our symbol. And then when I show all of these layers and show all the, um, 
hot, undo all the wireframing, you can see what, that we've got this gap here. Now, how do I fix this? Well, if I put all the wireframes back, let's just look at where these lines go. I notice that it's between the blue, the red, and the pink. This pink one would be the most obvious one to edit, which is the head base. So I'm going to go in here, hit I, and select that color. And I'm just going to pull this all the way back here. Just create that odd shape. Right? I know it doesn't make a huge amount of sense, but if I go back into the clip and show everything, you can see that it hides that section. And because this clip won't be moving very much, it doesn't matter that it's in an odd shape because everything is going to move on top of it and around it. As long as that gap is filled, I'm happy. So you can see that this face is coming together quite quickly. right? And so far we've got one, two, three, four, five layers. Now for... Uh, in my opinion, the most important layer, we have the jaw. So there are lots of ways you can do the jaw. Uh, sometimes I do it on top of uh, the head base layer. But in this scenario, I'm going to do it behind the head base. So I've left this layer here underneath all of the layers. And I'm going to wireframe and lock all of the layers above. Select my brush with a black. And I'm just going to mimic the jaw shape. Make sure the lines are in a state I'm happy with. And I'm not going to have the, the mouth position to be open and smiling like he is there. I'm just going to have it closed like this. That's just because by default, I like to have all of the mouths I animate start in a closed position. And then I create all the other positions on top of that. So as such, I'm going to have to pull the jaw up because it's not open and the jaw isn't pushed down. Okay, and then I can simply draw this line to make an area that I can fill in with my shade. Paint and paint. So there you go, if I hop out, you can see that the face all comes together, but there's something missing. I need to, first of all, hit F8 and convert this to a symbol and call this douche mouth. I'll just reposition it so that this line on the left is flush. That's something that can be a bit tricky to get right sometimes. So for example, uh, these two layers don't meet up very well here. Okay, so I'm gonna edit this pink layer and I'm just gonna make sure that there's enough thickness on this line and that they would meet up nicely. So I think that's a reasonable way to do it. There you go, so that looks much nicer. Now the other thing I wanna do is I want uh, this guy to have a five o'clock shadow like he does in the reference image here, as you can see behind. When I hide everything, he's got a bit of a, a bit of a, a beardy thing happening. So to do that, I'm going to go inside the jaw graphic that I've made. I'm going to uh, wireframe and lock and add a new layer on top. And I'm simply going to grab a very loud color, so just a random red. And I'm just going to draw the outline of where the facial hair is going to go. In this case, it's going to be a bit like this. And I just want to draw the outline so it's flush with the outline of the jaw. I'm just going to follow it all the way around, meet up, and then fill it. Now, it doesn't need to be red, of course. But the reason I select a loud color is just so that I can no notice very quickly where things are out of place. If I had made a very similar color or line, uh, it would be quite difficult to spot. So now that I'm happy with it, I'll just select my black and make the alpha 30. Paint that in. It's a bit dark, I'll make the alpha 20. And then I'm quite happy with that. Now I'll save the swatch because I'm going to use it later and just click in there. And I've got my 20% alpha black, which I'll use for facial hair. And then I can hop back out. And there we go. I've got the face ready to create the animated segments with. So. Uh, I, I do have one last thing, of course. I need the glasses, so I'm just going to lock on wireframe and draw the glasses. Can't forget that. It's one of the more, most important douchey items. So I'm just going to simply draw the outline of the glasses. Now, normally I would want the glasses to be under the nose layer because we have the shape uh, push out in that direction, but because the nose isn't going to move and I don't want to re-layer it because the eyebrows should appear under the glasses, but they're in the same clip, I'm going to just follow that line and then just keep going with the shape and that way it will look like they're behind the glasses are behind the nose 
without actually having them on a layer behind the nose. And that won't matter because I won't be moving the nose. So once I've finished my outline, I simply want to shade in where the darks and highlights go on the glasses. And once I've finished painting that in, I'm going to select those colors that I have and I'm going to make it more translucent. So I'll select 70% uh, alpha and paint that in. That way it means that the uh, assets that I've already drawn that appear underneath will actually show. So when I de-wireframe these, you can actually see the eyes underneath. Now that is actually a bit too light, so I'm going to make that 90%. And that's a little closer to what I'm looking for. I know it's quite opaque now, so it's hard to see the eyes, but that's okay. They're sunglasses. So that's kind of what they're meant to be like. I'm just going to hit F8 with the glasses selected and call this douche glasses. And then, ladies and gentlemen, we have finished our facial construction. And as such, we can delete that reference layer and then the white box layer underneath. And if we pop out, you can see that we've got this one piece and it looks like a single drawing. It looks like a one layered illustration. But in reality, when we enter this graphic, we've got these lots of layers with glasses, hair, eyes, pupils, whoops, a head base, and then the jaw. So it's ready to animate. And when I say that, I mean that if I drag the timeline inside this head out to 70, I could uh, hit F7 to create a new keyframe with the jaw here and select my uh, onion skin and I can animate a frame of the mouth. Open, like this, and bring the jaw down and that way I can start to create the motion of the head. But I'm gonna show you a trick. Now those of you who've watched a lot of my videos will know that I use this little extension to flash and it's gonna make your life very, very easy. And it's down here at the bottom right, it's called Keyframe Caddy. Now it doesn't come as standard with Adobe Flash so you actually have to download it so you simply open a browser and you go to cloudkid.com. This takes you to this website and you want to find tools, click on tools, and here at the top, keyframe caddy. So you click on that, it downloads an Adobe extension file, then you want to close Flash, open Adobe Extension Manager and install it, and then when you reopen Flash up here in Window and other panels, you'll see at the bottom there's this option for keyframe caddy and it gives you this little box. Now what does this actually do? If I click on this jaw and hit load thumbnails, it loads every frame within that graphic. Now it has to be a graphic, but let's say if I drew another mouth in here, right, so I'm going to just hit B, I'll do my wireframe, and if I draw on frame 2, the next mouth position I want to use, what happens is, let me just finish drawing this, now you'll see that I've got two frames <coughs> of mouth, okay? Now if I hop back outside and then I open up my keyframe caddy, keyframe caddy, and hit load thumbnails, you notice that I have two thumbnails here, right? And if I click on either of them, it swaps on the external graphic between those two frames and it freezes uh, the image. Okay, so what this means is when I get to animating, I could have 10 different mouth positions all loaded in here as thumbnails, and as I go through and animate, I can just click and it pops in that illustration and I can reuse the mouth positions I use the most and things like that. And this is extremely useful. As you'll see, I can just load this in the dock here. So I've got my keyframe caddy on my bottom right, which I, which is where I usually have it. Now I can create different frames within all of these graphic symbols, the eyebrows, the pupils, the eyes, the mouth, and I can have them all loaded ready for animation. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go through in each of these symbols one at a time, first with the eyebrows, and then with the pupils, then with the eyes, and then with the mouth. And I'm going to speed up the process so you can see, and all I will be doing is going inside this clip, adding a new frame, and with the wireframe set, I'm going to be drawing different positions that I may be using through the course of animating his face.
So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. What I have here is my finished face ready to animate this douche head. So I'm going to go through and show you exactly what I've done layer by layer. On the first layer that I drew, I created a head base. There is nothing else with this. There is no more layers, there's no more frames, anything. That is just going to stay the same forever. On a layer underneath that, I have a jaw. Okay. Now, inside that jaw, I have 17 frames of mouth positions that I've drawn. Every conceivable mouth shape that I can picture using with this character. Now, when I go outside and hit load thumbnails in Keyframe Caddy, the extension that I mentioned, you'll see that they all show up here. And as I click them, they load into the uh, outside frame on the graphic. Now this is going to be extremely useful in the next tutorial that I do on facial animation. You'll see how I use that. On the next frame above I have my eyeballs and these are uh, useful in that I can create different eye open and close positions. Above that I have pupils and I have different levels of pupil dilation that I might need to use later. On the layer above that I have my nose and brows and in there I have different eyebrow expressions going up, then down, then angry and then askew. Okay? And then on top of that I have hair where I have a few different hair motion bits and then on top of that I have the glasses. So basically using this I can create any expression that I might need to use if I wanted him angry I can go like this and I can give him smaller eyes and I can make this go up and give him a manic smile, right, that kind of thing. Or I can make him really sad, give him big eyes looking off in the distance and then that pushed forward mouth. So you can see how I've created the pieces of the puzzle that fit together on different layers and I can use these to create very useful expressions and in another tutorial I'm going to show you how I can use these pieces to create an animation. So I hope this tutorial has been useful in showing you how to set up a head for animation in Adobe Flash. Make sure to like and subscribe and all that good stuff. Otherwise thank you for joining me and until next time ladies and gentlemen I will see you later.